Well, we're staying busy with those tropical systems out there. I'm meteorologist Joe Astolfi. This is meteorologist Kate Mantich. And yeah, we've got several storms of concern. Yes. Maria, of course, in the Caribbean and Jose, which is battering the East Coast. Yeah, category one right now, but mm -hmm. still seeing those impacts up and down the Carolinas all the way potentially to Massachusetts, Cape Cod area. So right, right now we're going to go live to John Van Pelt. He is in Rodanthe, North Carolina. John, how is it out there right now? Good morning, Kate. Hey, Joe. Well, it is blustery. We've got a lot of uh, rain coming in for the first time in two days. This is the first time I've gotten wet in two whole days down here. Jose was dry up until now, but it is gusty. We're getting gusts around 31 or so with the wind sustained in the 20s up on this part of the Outer Banks. The biggest problem is that overwash. There's been substantial overwash over Highway 12, which is the only highway connecting the Outer Banks. Uh, so there's no way to get out right now. In Rodanthe here, Highway 12 is is closed just south of the P Island Visitor Center. That means anybody going north is not going to be able to do so for at least two hours is the latest estimate. And it's been closed for an hour and a half or so already. And anybody trying to come south from north of here is not going to be able to get down for quite a while. We see the pictures too from Avon from yesterday. Boy, that flooding where the dunes were gone, eight or ten houses down there have the dunes totally flattened out. So now all those houses have two or three feet of sand in their carports, sand in the driveways, and the flooding in their yards that now has overwashed into Highway 12 down between Buxton and Avon, mainly around Avon, and that's going to continue for a while. High tide this morning was at 730, but as of an hour and a half ago, uh, both lanes of parts of Highway 12 are underwater down there too. So it's a dangerous day for travel, if not totally inconvenient day for travel. You see this car going behind this is the water in the parking lot of the gas station, which is a high spot. And these cars lined up behind me are just waiting to get off the outer banks. So for at least a couple of more hours, we're going to have to deal with the road closures. But all day long, the next high tide uh, this afternoon is going to bring more surge up and more flooding here and down further south on the outer banks. So big problems until tomorrow when Jose finally gets out of this part of the country. Yeah, it'll be good to see Jose kind of depart. Of course, conditions may worsen a bit as we get towards yes. New England. Uh, but you mentioned uh, not seeing a whole lot of rain, but we did see some showery weather begin to pick up in your area not too long ago. And those winds are picking up. You can hear it on your microphone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's gotten very gusty. I had breakfast at a place a little while ago, and the guys were saying, what were those winds last night? And I was going, ah, they were around 35 or so. But if you haven't been in wind and it's sustained like that, it sounds a lot higher than it is. But it's been very gusty. It's a it's a day that even when the rain stops, you're going to get sandblasted if you stand out on the beach. And it will be, uh, some of the piers probably won't even let people fish today because it's going to be so windy up on the piers. Yeah, it definitely is looking windy. You saw that gust move through right there. But what can you expect maybe as this Jose system continues to push off to north for places like Nantucket, Cape Cod, portions of that more northeastern, more eastern, excuse me, mm -hmm. Massachusetts and up there? Yeah, you know, we're already seeing some, uh, some some tidal flooding, some coastal flooding up there, and the storm has been just continually pushing north day after day after day. So in some cases, they've probably been, been getting some battering waves even worse than parts of the Outer Banks down here. People need to worry about that coastal flooding. Water where they're not used to being is going to be there. Uh, so roads are going to go underwater in some of those low-lying low areas up there. Driving is going to be a major concern. And if you get stuck in the water, it's going to be hard to get anybody to come get Get you too in these conditions. So don't drive through water on the road. Make sure if you've uh, still got time before the winds pick up, you get all your lawn furniture and stuff like that in before it blows around because not only can you lose your stuff, but that becomes debris too that can tear up your house and other people's houses. And we don't want windows to get knocked out by flying deck chairs. Always in, bad thing. Indeed, that's for sure, John. Well, we're glad uh, you were able to touch base with us. Uh, stay safe. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll check, uh, check with John coming mm -hmm. up in just a little bit. But we we want to give you some updates too on the path of Jose. Uh, not the greatest of updates, unfortunately, no. because the models are kind of out to sea, literally uh, and figuratively speaking, <laughs> as we really can't really pinpoint where the storm is going to head. What we do believe is going to happen, though, Kate, is we're going to see a little bit of loop action yes. by the end of the week. So there's pretty good consensus on Jose continuing to move north and northeastern, but then that loop, mm -hmm. really not sure, but definitely going to be losing strength, which is the good Indeed. thing. We'll still have impacts across the coast. Mm -hmm. But anything de-strengthening is mm -hmm. for the good. Indeed. But unfortunately, we have Maria out there as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll be touching base with the forecast on that major hurricane and checking in with our team coverage from the island of Puerto Rico.